Hello YouTube, it's me again. I got some more mail here in the in the uh, mail. This time I do believe this is my RPM gauge. All right, this is just gonna be an unboxing. I will do a review on this, and I might add it. Go, I'll, I'll go ahead and add it to this video. Okay, so we're gonna do a review on this. I'm gonna show you where I bought it from, how much I paid for, uh, and what I'm gonna be doing with this. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up here real quick. There you go, you guys can see me. Alright. There we go. Open her up. Alright, sensor. Right here in the little bag. This is the hall sensor. Alright. And here's a little magnet already. There's a magnet stuck to it. Right here. A little bitty small neodymium. Ain't that much weight to it, so this should be work. Should be able to work just fine on the hub. All right, and what this is, every time it passes in front of that, it keeps track of the RPM. All right, so there's that. Huh. All sensor for it, and as you can tell, I had to get longer wires for it so it can reach the turbine. All right, let's see what else we got here. Not really much for packing, is it? Just a little small bag with everything in there. Eh, nothing else in the bag. No need to keep this. So we'll toss that. Alright, here we go. Let me get this opened up. Don't need that. We got a little got it a little anti-static bag. I usually keep those though. You never know you might have something that you want to put in it that you don't want to be shocked by static. So we will keep that. Right. This looks like a three wire. It's got a four pin header with three wires on it. Alright, here's the uh, meter. And if you look at it, it looks just like a regular uh, volt amp meter type deal. Except for this is going to show you what the RPM So as you can tell, it goes from 0 to 9,999. This here will tell you everything on how you need to hook it up. Alright. There we go. And it's pretty simple stuff. Um, here, maybe I'll see if I can get it on here where you guys can see it. Alright. There's all the information on there. And here's how you hook it up. There's your uh, DC power. Alright. There's your hall sensor that has the three wires. And if you look on here, you got black, red, black, yellow. Alright. Black, red, and black go to your blue and your brown yeah blue and your brown and then your black goes to the yellow wire of your f it's a four pin header but that's where it goes Easy. oh uh, this is what it says on there it says feature it's a it's a, with a high speed IC bright red LED easy install that's this thing right here uh, good standby strong anti-interference so nothing really messes with this power supply that I can use on here is DC 8 volts to 24 volts I'll try to keep this at 12 volts using a uh, little power supply for it uh, display dimensions gives you what size it is it's a 0.56 inch RED red input signal pulse signal alright clear zero automatic clear zero times 5 seconds to 30 seconds microseconds weight 50 grams nobody really cares about how much it weighs uh, measuring indication um, RPM 5000 plus minus 2 RPM greater than 5000 plus minus 3 measuring range 5 to 9999 panel cutout gives you the dimensions overall dimensions and the type of environment that this can operate in alright and go all the way up to positive negative 50 degrees Celsius. Alright. 
Uh, refresh frequency 0.2 to 0.5 microseconds at 120 to 12,000 RPM and 0.25 to 0.06 microseconds at 240 RPMs and 9,999 RPMs. Alright, uh, gives me the wiring diagram. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's a pretty simple hookup. Alright. So we'll do some small tests. What we'll do, we'll get this stuff together. I'll probably just use a little small 9 volt battery for now. Um, or I, I got a 12 volt battery. You can use it on 12 volt since that's what I'm going to try to set it at. And I'll use a uh, solar charge controller to keep that battery charged at all times. Other than that, that's pretty much all we've got here. Okay? So there's this. There's a little jumper for it. Just plugs here in the back. That's all it is. I'll have to get a longer wire for that so I can make that longer to reach the um, turbine up there. Which is I can probably use um, a three wire um, thing you use for heating, your, heating and your cooling. That kind of wire. I could use that to get my uh, this sensor up there by the turbine. Other than that, that's this. And there's that. Alright, so. Alright, YouTube, we're back. And uh, let me go grab another meter here, real quick. Alright, YouTube, I'm back. Alright, we got two meters here now. Alright, we're going to check the accuracy of both of them. I got the motor running here. Alright, this is the same motor you seen me earlier play with. Uh, so, we're going to. See if this uh, gauge I've got is correct. All right, all right, come here, guys. Let me get you flipped around here so I can see you. All right, there's the little gauge. Right now it's showing zero. There's the little uh, sensor. Let me disconnect this real quick so you can see where the magnet is. All right, I'm using just a regular old treadmill motor. All right, and there's a little magnet. Alright, you gotta make sure this is set right, otherwise the sensor will not pick pick it up. So alright, so now we're gonna reconnect the motor, get her spun up. And there's also a piece of reflective tape there. So I've got two meters here. I've got the uh tachometer here. I'm gonna use that to show RPM and show the RPM with this one. And we're gonna see how close and if they're both show the same. Okay, so here we go. Let's fire it up. All right, YouTube, got the motor running, and there it is. All right, so we're going to put the sensor up by the motor. Okay, there we go. And there it is. It is reading it at 629, 628 RPMs. All right. So now we're going to use the other meter on the reflective tape. There's the test button, and we're going to see what it reads. Six twenty-four. So the other little meter is kind of showing it just a little bit more. About uh, this is close. Six twenty-four point six. So the other one's reading twenty-nine. This one here is reading twenty-six point six. Twenty-four point six. So that's really close. Really close for RPM. All right. I don't know if there's any adjustments on here. So it looks like there's no calibration uh, and these they can be done on it so it looks like it's just just the way it is they do have an add and set looks like nothing there is connected unless there's a switch on the bottom side but I don't think there is looks like you can get a chip to do more they've got the other they got the processor there scratched out all right, there's another positive five volts ground transmit receive so it looks like you can pull data off of this uh, actually this is an Adreno chip I guarantee you that's what that is because five ground transmit receive those are the uh, programming pins so they're able to program it so alright well 
there you guys see it. There's a small review of that uh, RPM gauge. Works out pretty good if I don't tear up the uh, sensor. Six twenty six. Yeah, they're really close. I mean, they are really, really close. See if this thing, how far away from this I can have this magnet. And all right, let's pull it away. Let's wait for it to reset. See what happens. There we go. See how close you gotta get before it actually starts detecting it. There you go, that's a pretty good distance, so when I get this set up, I can get it, I don't have to have it up on it, so I can have it just a little ways away. Alright, that's not bad at all, not bad. Alright guys, I hope you like this small review. Alright, because this is what's going to be going up on the pole, so you guys can see what the RPM of the wind turbine is as it's spinning. Alright. Alright, there you go YouTube. That is another unboxing. I guess it ain't really a box, it's an unbagging. So we unbagged a, uh, RP another RPM gauge. Uh, this is going to be one that when I do video, startup, everything, you'll be able to see the RPM with correlation with the end speed for the anemometer. So everything is going to be there for you to see. So there ain't going to be no faking anything, there ain't going to be no bull crap in anything. All the data is going to be there for you to see on all my wind turbines. All the blade sets that I'm going to be tr testing. Um, I, right now I've got 11 blades up on the wind turbine. I'm going to be knocking it down to 9 blades. And I'm going to try 7 blades. I'm even going to try to knock it down maybe to a 5 blade or a 6 blade hub. Just to see what each RPM, what the startup speed of the wind turbine is. What the RPM of each blade is at RPM. Uh... That way, you as consumers know exactly what you need for your wind turbine. Alright? And I'm going to try... Uh, right now, I'm using the 60-inch swept area blades. With the 60-inch swept area. I'm going to be trying the 80-inch swept area with both 3 and 5 blades because that's what's out on the market right now. Uh, and if I can find longer blades that will fit this turbine, I will try longer blades. Um, other than that, that's what I've got to show right now, so please stay tuned to this channel, and you'll see more uh, live views, wattages, you'll see everything. Everything that I do, you'll get to see what I do. So if I make a mistake, you'll be able to learn from my mistake. So please comment, like, subscribe to my channel right here. Subscribe to me right there you go. Subscribe to it and you'll be able to see more videos. Thank you, YouTube. Bye.